Today's True Fire Artist Spotlight is Frank Vignola. Frank is one of the most extraordinary guitarists performing before the public today. His stunning virtuosity has made him the guitarist of choice for many of the world's top musicians. His dynamic genre-spanning music has brought him to 14 countries on three continents, and still growing, performing in some of the world's most illustrious venues, including the Sydney Opera House in Australia, Carnegie Hall, the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco, and New York's Lincoln Center. Today, we'd like to feature three free lessons from Frank's Essential series, Advanced Chord Melody, Chord Melody Etudes, and Riffin' Jazz Blues. All right, Always by Irving Berlin, three-quarter tempo, two halves, beautiful, beautiful song. I started with some diatonic movement, just using triads, starting with the nice G. Simple G triad, then a single note E, and then another G triad in the first inversion. And then I move it diatonically, and then up to the G major seventh. Simple phrase to start it. See that? You gotta have nice clean tone and a nice slow tempo like this. And then a G6-9 to a major seventh. My favorites, you're going to notice those six nines throughout these arrangements. They're great guitar chords. And then a little passing chord thing, G, with a B in the bass, B flat diminished to a D7. Just some passing chords to move the time along. So it's always one. And then big chord. And then again, diatonic movement. D7, really a C triad to a D, and then another one, right, and then we're back to the always part with the major 7 to the 6 9, and then a cool little D7 sharp 9 in there just to hip it up a little bit, flat 9 to lead back to the G melody note, okay, great little fill there. To the diatonic. Now a B major seventh, a great key change, up a major third. Major seventh, single note, and then diatonic movement in B. Same thing that we did in G, but only now in the key of B. And then a quick, you see that? Keep that chord movement in there. Again, now in the key of B. We did the same thing in the key of G. Just move it up three, uh, uh, three fret, four frets, and then an F sharp seventh, and then again diatonic movement, single note, F sharp nine. There it is. There's your F sharp nine. It's this inversion. Okay, and then a B major seven to the B six nine, and then an A minor nine to a D9 to get back to the second half. And that's kind of a cool rhythm. It's one and one, two, and three. One, two, and. It's like one, uh, uh, uh. Got that? A little tricky. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And back to the second half. Big G major seventh this time. Fill it out, put a little color in there with the major seventh. And then again with the diatonic movement. Six nine to the major seventh. And now I put the G13 in the middle strings and move down chromatically to the E13. Same inversion, only I put the low E in the bass. That chord sounds really full. Isn't that a nice chord? Beautiful chord. And then single note bring it back to the melody because we have to remember the melody has to be louder than the rest of the chords when we play chord melody. So that's why I'll do, you know, you'll hear and then now a little quieter and then all right you see that? I'm louder on the melody to an E9 spread. I love this E9 too in the 
third, uh, third inversion here with the seventh in the bass, and the ninth, third, and root. Okay, and then an A minor seventh with the F natural. And I just use an A minor seven and move the F up. And then to answer it, I put it down an octave. Love that sound on the guitar, the open A minor. Okay, bar 25, the four chord C. It's the little triad. Melody, notes, C minor six, G major seventh, melody notes to an A13. A little passing chord in there, and then A minor seventh, melody, D9, and then the ending. Seventh, G six nine, D seven sharp nine, flat nine to a G major seventh. Now notice this G major seventh inversion. Have the F sharp and then the open G string. It's a nice sound. Okay, and that ending should sound like this. And you could take your time with it. Take as much time as you want with that ending. All right, again, take this measure by measure. Make sure you understand the concepts because we want to take these concepts into other chord melodies, not just memorize a chord melody. Okay, let's move on. In this etude, I started off with two choruses completely straight according to the music. Two choruses I altered rhythmically using anticipation. And the last two choruses I improvised a little around the chord melody. So first let's look at the uh, chords, each individual chord to make sure we're fingering them correctly and making them clean. It's very important in these first choruses of this etude and all the etudes we do to make sure your chords are clean. So let's take a look at each individual one. The first chord is a C major seventh. Most of you may know this form. If not, you're just barring the fifth fret and using your pinky for the B note, the major seventh. Again, make sure each note is clean by playing each of the notes in the chord, making sure they're ringing. You don't want to have, you want each note to be clean. You don't have to press as hard as you think. You don't want to break the neck, just give enough pressure to have the notes sound. The second chord is a 6-9 chord, a C6-9. Together, when transitioning between chords, try to visualize the chord you're going to. So while you're playing this one, visualize this chord. So before you move there, you have a good idea of what the chord's going to look like to make a smooth transition. The second measure starts with a C major 9 chord. your pinky and D with your third finger. Some people have the tendency to have the pinky block the second note, so just make sure you round your fingers. So the first three chords. the second beat we're just hitting an E note with our pinky and then getting ready to put our C major seventh chord in position so that measure right remember you don't always have to hit a chord on every melody note when playing chord melody you can hit 
the melody note, then the chord. So the first two measures. Now I would suggest that you simply take that second measure and make a little exercise out of it. Go over and over. Trying for cleanliness. Okay, the third measure we go to a D minor 7th. And now for that second note, we're simply letting the chord hold and adding our pinky. So these three notes are holding, and then you add your pinky. Then strike the whole chord, adding the high A note. to make these little half a measure chord lines, we make them into exercises. Make sure they're clean. And there's the high C note. So that first half of the measure of bar three. Now up to a D minor nine. Then a G nine. Listen to how nice that sounds. 5, a D minor 9 to a G9. A movable form, so you can move that all over the neck. To the C major 7th. Again, get the A note as a single note, because we don't have to put a chord on every note. Visualize that A minor 7th. Let's just take those first four bars, concentrating on cleanliness. The next bars, the same as bar three, except a different G seventh. going to hit a series of C major chords. C major 7th, C6-9, C major 7th, and C6th. And this just proves that if you see a C major chord, you can use a C major 7th, you could use a C6-9, you can use a C major 7th, you can use a C 6th. They all work. Back to that D minor 9. Then we simply hit the A note. Now that's pretty. Adding the A flat, which is the flat 9. G7 flat 9. So a D minor 9, melody note. G7 flat 9, hit the melody note. A D flat major 7th, resolving to a C major 7th. Anytime you have a root note C, in this case, for the melody, you can move up to the D-flat major 7th, one half step up, and resolve down to the C. So the last two measures. And resolution. So I'm going to go over that one more time, nice and slow.
Okay, in the third and fourth choruses, I added some anticipations. Rhythmic alteration is a great tool to spice up a chord melody a little bit. Um, so I used anticipations, and what that means is instead of in the first measure, there are two half notes, right? Chords, C major 7th for two beats, and then C6-9 for two beats. If you anticipate a note, it means you hit it a half a beat before the note sounds. So it would be 1, 2, and 3, 4. Again, 1, 2, and 3, 4. 1, and 2, and 3, 4. 1, and 2, and 3, 4. It's like a Charleston rhythm. Ba, 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 ba. You should be able to sing that rhythm. Ba, ba. And then again in the second measure, instead of all on the beat, I anticipated that last chord. Ba, ba, ba. Instead of ba, da, da. And anticipation. It's almost like stumbling while you walk. You start before you're supposed to start. So, anticipate. Ba, ba, anticipate. Same thing here. Anticipate the C and the A minor. I'll go over that again. Ba, 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 da, da. Same thing here. Ba, da, 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 da. Now here I anticipated the chords, each chord. And used staccato, a quick rhythm, instead of letting the notes hold out. Like I did in the first two choruses, I anticipated them and made them short. So once again, on that second, uh, third, and fourth choruses, I used anticipation. Slowly, one, two, and three, four. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Anticipate. Ba, ba, ba. Anticipate all the chords short. Anticipate. 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 Short. Anticipate. The last two chords. So that gives it a little swing kind of sound, like the uh, a swing rhythm, a Charleston rhythm. If you anticipate notes like that, it brings out a little more swing or groove in the music. Now, the last two times I played it through, I played it kind of improvising around the melody as if I was going to play this piece as a solo piece in performance. And what I did was, instead of... I gave a little uh, uh, kind of fill. Same here. Kind of a bluesy. Right? Play some single line, then add the chord. Same thing here. Kind of moving in between the notes using uh, chromatic. So you kind of move the notes around to use the notes in between the melody notes to get to and from neighboring tones. Did the same thing here.
neighboring tones, chromatics. Right? Don't forget the melody is that. So you have these notes in between the two melody notes. So I just simply played leading chromatically to the melody note. Then I'd use a little arpeggio, arpeggiate the tones. Chromatic. Scalar. And on the end, I slowed it down. And then a nice big clean last chord. One of my favorite major tonality chords. E, C, D, G, and B. C major 7th, adding the 2nd. One of my favorite chords. In study number 2, it's a B-flat blues, 12 measure blues. Again, it starts with the 1 chord. You'll notice in the comping, once again, I'm using all 3 and 4 string, 2 notes. Whether I'm doing four to the bar or comping in a more modern style, that works for the B flat right there, the two notes. B flat seven for one measure. We had the flat seven. All right, then we go to E flat seven. Look at that, the third and the seventh right there. Right back to B flat. Right there. C minor seven. Again, it's part of the smaller part of the big chord. We're staying out of the way of the bass player, and we're out of the way of the melody, the higher register. We're right in the middle. C minor seventh, F seventh right there. If we look, there's the bigger chord. We're just playing the two notes in the middle. And back to B flat, the first and the third. Okay, you can also put the sixth and the third for that, B flat sixth flat seventh. Okay, either one, you'll hear me doing both of them in the comping part. The melody starts on the fifth. Okay, from the fifth to the fifth. It's a great position on the guitar and for jazz especially. Fifth to the fifth. Here's your root. Your third and your fifth. You should always know where those chord tones are. Very important. Okay, the rhythm first of all. Ba 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 bu ba bu ba ba. Ba bu ba bu ba bu ba ba. We forget the third element of music is rhythm. We need to internalize these rhythms. These are jazz rhythms that we can put our own notes to and improvise with. So that's why I'm going over these rhythms and have you sing them. Very, very important to sing these riff style rhythms. Okay, so we start on the F, the fifth, go down the scale. Now, there's your sixth chord again. One, three, five, and six. Okay, in this riff style, blues, swing style, blues playing, there's a lot of that sixth sound. Root, and we slide up to that third again, just like we did in the other exercise in the key of C. And then we answer it. A little different, watch this. Root, ninth, flat seventh. It's a cool little bebop style sound. Okay, and then we go up the same riff, same rhythm in the key of E flat. The fifth of E flat, B flat. So, and there's your sixth again, right? Your E flat sixth chord. Right there. Here's the difference. E 
use a little chromatic movement from the third to the flat third down to the fifth of the B flat on off beats. Another great aspect of jazz rhythm using off beats. Watch this one, two, ba, 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 bo, ba, da, 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 ba. Right, so off beats. Now we're back to that F. And we're back to the fifth of B flat for that opening riff. Right. Now, C minor. And that's just a classic jazz riff right there, using the third of C minor and going back and forth between the third and the ninth, or the third and the second. And then up. And then for the F7, that E flat becomes the flat seven. A little bebop phrase to end right there. And that's great. Let's practice this slow now, all the way through. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Up to E flat. Four, one. Beats, ba, bo, ba, C minor, ba, bo, bo, one and three and four and off beats. Great jazz phrasing. Okay, let's move on.